I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker, who is Marie-Joseph de Villers. She's one of the three co-chairs of ICASM, the International Coalition for the Abolition of Surrogate Motherhood. She's also a lesbian activist. And Marie-Joseph's talk is Surrogacy Around the World, Modern Slavery Sold as Reproductive Solutions. So... Thank you so much. Welcome, Marie-Joseph, and over to you. I will first introduce our coalition, then give a quick idea on how surrogacy develops worldwide, and finally come to our topic, surrogacy, modern slavery, sold as reproductive solution. Uh, the coalition was create, created in 2018. We made it clear from the very beginning uh, that a feminist that as feminists, we don't have nothing to do with conservative people and far-right political parties who are also opposed to surrogacy. But the four femi feminist principles that we put forward are equality between men and women, emancipation and autonomy of women, legal access to abortion and contraception, equality between heterosexuals and homosexuals. Uh, surrogacy for us is a social practice. It's not a medical practice. And it's also a globalized in the industry. Surrogacy is a violence against women and should be included as such in international instruments. And the abolition of surrogacy should be part of the feminist agenda. In our mapping of violence against women, surrogacy is classified under reproduct reproductive exploitation along with a trade in all, all sites, forced pregnancy, forced sterilize sterilization, forced abortion, and prohibition on contraception and abortion. Let's take a look at the different countries' policies about uh, reproductive surrogacy. Roughly, there are three main systems behind the way governments tackle surrogacy at national level. First, the ban. It is the case in most uh, European countries. In Europe, one of the core value is human dignity. It is the first item of the, in the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. And um, it is um, in the name of human dignity that surrogacy is banned in most countries in Europe, but it's changing right now. Regulation, pragmatism leads to a regulation. As long as surrogacy exists, it must be regulated. That is the way political people think. UK is a good example of that. Commercial surrogacy, free trade, and individual freedom are the values leading to opening up widely to surrogacy. This is the case in the United States. Our aim as feminists is to tip the balance in favor of human dignity in every country against the growing trend towards neoliberalism. Surrogacy is developing rapidly. A few years ago, we could think that surrogacy was far away from us, but it's getting closer and closer. It will. I will just mention three cases that I come across recently. When women M MEP told us that it was very difficult for her to vote against surrogacy because members of her family were already using surrogacy. A young woman was stopped on the street by a man saying, oh, you are so beautiful. Would you agree to give me some of your eggs? She even felt proud of it. Another young woman told us that their uh, gay friends have asked her to become their surrogate. She was quite shocked, but felt she had to do it because of the compassion she felt for them. But luckily, she came back to her senses and refused. There is a growing de demand for surrogate babies, which is driven by patriarchal uh, culture. In East Asia, under influence of Confucianism, women must produce a male heir. In South African countries, women must give birth to, must give birth to be considered a woman. Desperate women 
from rich couple in those countries are trying to find a solution. Insemination first, then IVF, last step, surrogacy. It is how a specific medical field specializes in surrogacy, first for domestic surrogacy and later on for cross-border surrogacy. This is the case right now in Uganda. In Western countries, the desire to have a child is promoted as a right to a child, but not any child. A child genetically related to the male part of the commissioning couple. And this, the industry is very, very powerful and invent new products. Many stakeholders are involved in surrogacy. Brokers, clinics, lawyers, psychologists. Yes, psychologists. Lately in Quebec, psychologists have been instructed to assess any surrogacy projects, meeting with the clients and with the surrogate. Surrogacy is part of their business. The industry has developed a strong communication and lobbying force. Pause. And the industry is very efficient at moving their business when the law restricts access to surrogacy in one country. For example, some brokers and clinics transferred part of their business, business from India to Kenya when India, India restricted access to surrogacy in 2015. As Georgia is planning to stop commercial surrogacy, clinics and brokers might, might move, for example, to Thailand. Thailand is re, re, ready to reopen to cross-border surrogacy. Political people in Thailand put it clearly, surrogacy brings foreign currencies. Is surrogacy a modern form of slavery? According to Article 1 of the Geneva Convention, slavery is a status or condition of a person over whom any or all of the powers attaching to the right of ownership are exercised. But there is no question of title of ownership, but of the attributes of ownership. The most important is the control that one person can exercise over another. When the, so if we draw a parallel between slavery and surrogacy, what do we have? When the surrogate mother is recruited, she loses all her fundamental rights in favor of the commissioning people. As you might have noticed, we usually speak of commissioning people so as not to use the words of the market, such as intended parents. The surrogate mother is recruited under three levels of conditions. Condition included, of course, in the contract, additional uh, condition imposed by the brokers, even by the law or the clinic, for example, multiple embryo transfer. On top of that, the commissioning people can add new obligations C-section, abortion, special diet, non-necessary non medical screening. With surrogacy, there is a total control over the surrogate. In this way, we can make a parallel between surrogacy and slavery. But how does one enter in slavery? Entry into slavery is through human trafficking or condition of birth. Surrogate mothers today don't enter either into modern slavery by condition of birth. However, in her article, A Handmaid's Tale in East Asia, Yoshi Yanagiri proved that in East Asia, there were cases of, of women being born as baby producers for rich couples until 1950. Uh, in order to become surrogate mothers, women are being trafficked as defined by the Palermo Protocol. 
Um, and according to this protocol issued in 2000, trafficking is based on three conditions. An action, several means, and a goal, and a purpose. An action, surrogate mother are recorded by the industry, industry under very strict criteria. That's what we talked about a moment earlier. They are also transported from their own home to the IVF clinic, from their country to the country of the commissioning people, or to another country for embryo transfer, and then to del and then for delivery of the child. These cases are highlighted in our joint study with enough migrant women in the surrogacy in this industry. Means. The recruitment of a surrogate mother is carried out on a triple, triple deception, triple lie. The first, that the child is not being sold. The second one, that the surrogate mother is not the mother. Third, that the child she gives birth to is not her own. How come anyone claim that she's not the mother of a child for one cell out of more than 50 billion cells of which the baby will be made up. The purpose is exploitation. Exploitation for us occurs whenever a woman gives birth to a child, not for a own parental project, but for the project of a third party, which is the case of to surrogacy. In conclusion, we can claim that surrogacy is equal to human trafficking. How is it possible to sell slavery as a reproductive solution? We've seen that on one hand, we have the pa patriarchal culture, and on the other hand, a powerful market. Both are working to together to fuel surrogacy. Here, are some of the strategies that have, been, that have been put forward to achieve this goal, sell slavery as a reproductive solution. The first is to launder, to whitewash the practice, using positive terms to hide it, its violence. Just think at the cleverly coined terms to disguise, sur disguise surrogacy. Altruistic, altruistic surrogacy, ethical surrogacy, solidarity-based sur surrogacy, it is in Cuba, and humanitarian surrogacy in Vietnam. The second is the hijacking of concepts that once stood for women's or human emancipation. Think of the slogan, my body, my choice which is often referred to. With surrogacy, it has been turned on its head. My body is the choice of the commissioning people. On the idea of informed consent, in surrogacy, the consent is simply both. On altruistic surrogacy, whether paid or not paid, the risk for the surrogate mother is the same. The third strategy is to focus only on the commissioning parents. <clears throat> this is what we call narcissistic compassion. Politicians, journalists, and many people side with the commissioning people because they belong to the same social category never with the women or the children. Finally, the hiring of lawyers is used to prove and pretend that surrogacy is not the sale of children, that surrogacy is not the exploitation of women, but only the use of their pregnancy services. <laughs> and it works. The EU Parliament used to condemn surrogacy as such in their annual report on democracy, but now it only condemns commercial surrogacy. In the revision of the Directive on Trafficking in Human Beings, the EU Parliament 
proudly included surrogacy among the forms of trafficking, but with a wording that implies there is a good surrogacy and that only bad surrogacy should be prosecuted. We have long, a long way to go, and we still have to work definitely to, put, to definitely put surrogacy on the feminist agenda, and from there, on the political agenda. Feminist man feminists managed to put the right to the right to abortion, rape, feminicide, to the political agenda. Why not surrogacy? The answer is we can't yet give global data to show the extent and the impact of surrogacy on women and children. With abortion, rape, femi feminicides, showing data made the difference and helps to make friend political people aware of the issue. <coughs> but there is hope. In countries where governments are trying to open up to surrogacy or to move from restricted, to restricted surrogacy to commercial surrogacy, there are women fighting them. And ICASM is trying to support them as much as possible. But in some countries like Albania, Thailand, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, we don't have contact. Please help us if you can. Now, as a conclusion, look now at this first picture. The first, this shows, this is one advertising for surrogacy. You may have noticed that the surrogate is a black woman. The second one is the interpretation of this photo, of this picture by an artist. Surrogacy is there seen as a predatory system. Thank you for your attention. I'm now happy to leave the floor to our friend and courageous partners, Women Against Surrogacy Belgium. <laughs>